Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 27th. I have a ton of material this week and enough actually for two weeks, so I'm not even going to get to it all. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions, and if I don't mention yours, I will probably get to it next week, but it's always great to have this extra material. First up, this was sent to me by my friend Brian West. This is a new escort radar detector and boy have they gotten advanced from the old days of radar detectors too where all you would do is you just hit the radar signal and it would give you an alarm now they've got applications even behind them this is the $599 escort live and I guess the detector itself is called the passport max 2 and I'll just read a little bit from the article here now with built-in Bluetooth technology the passport max 2 gives you access to escorts Award-winning app Escort Live, our exclusive real-time ticket protection network, which warns you of upcoming alerts received and reported by other users in the area and gives you access to local speed limit data for overspeed alerts. So it's almost like a communication system to where even the other users of the Escort Detector 2 can inform you ahead of time, kind of like uh, an advanced version of the old days of CB radio where we used to get on the CB radio on channel 19 and warn each other in the area. Uh, all of this part right here, uh, I'll read, uh, speed traps and camera locations are everywhere. We're addressing the increased number of safety cameras installed throughout the U.S. and Canada by preloading the Passport Max with our exclusive database, and it goes on, and it says it's updated on a weekly basis, and you can even add your own. So if you see a camera that's not part of the database, you can even add that yourself. So that's kind of what my... Uh, uh, GPS does too. My GPS has that feature to where I don't know how updated. Well, I guess it's as updated as you update the maps, but um, I've actually got warnings from it too about the uh, camera intersections. So, uh, quite expensive, but I mean, for all it does, I guess if you're uh, really that concerned with uh, getting tickets and stuff like that, maybe you'd be willing to pay 599 bucks. but uh, cool that they've added all that extra technology into it. And next up, this is from my friend Dave N. Ampy Charger uses kinetic energy to charge your phone. I've done other versions of this, too. It's basically the same principle as the uh, watch winder, the old mechanical watch winders. Well, now they can use your actual motion as you move around, and uh, they have a video about this, too. But they say the typical person uh, walks about 10,000 steps in a day, and that's more than enough to charge up to uh, about three hours runtime on the average phone. This is a Kickstarter project, and they've already reached their goal, so it is going to actually happen. It's cool. they got a little video at the bottom, and if you want to watch the video, one thing that they just, uh, it just lasts for a few seconds in the video, but it kind of reminds me of a few friends of mine. They show a guy with, uh, I call it nervous leg syndrome. He's got one of these uh, charger deals uh, strapped to his leg, or I think just stuck in the top of his boot, and he's one of those people that has to be jiggling his leg all the time, so I'm thinking uh, with people like that that got the nervous leg syndrome, they could probably charge it up and charge up their device really quickly, uh, use, use all that nervous energy to uh, uh, charge up their phone maybe in uh, just a few minutes, you never know, but uh, I, I just kind of got a kick out of that watching the video about the guy and his nervous energy. The device is quite small. It doesn't look that much bigger than a credit card, you know, a little bit thicker, but, yeah, kind of a cool device. And next up, this is from my friend Jose Angel. This is something that I didn't think was going to be coming for a long time. Now, you have to get an invite to get this, but this is real-world test on Microsoft Skype Translator Preview. So you got to be, right now you got to be invited for it, but I guess they've got Spanish up to where it's workable that... Uh, basically, you'd be talking English, the other person would be talking Spanish, and it would be able to provide real-time, or not exactly real-time, I guess slightly delayed, but close to real-time translation back and forth, and they're working in the future to do German language. Uh, the problem with German language, they said, is because the verbs come towards the end of the sentences. They have to be longer pauses before it can do the most correct translation, so... They're still working on the German part of it, but I guess the Spanish to English, if you can get an invite, you can get um, something on here. So take a look at the article. But, uh, yeah, getting closer and closer to these Star Trek Universal Translators to where anybody can speak to anybody, and if you don't understand the language, uh, the application itself makes it so you can be understood between each other. And this next one... Um, I wasn't even. I think I'd heard about this before, but I hadn't even looked into it. But I just happened to stumble across this. Google's cardboard VR gets serious. Now this is just a little device. Costs about. Oh, I got one place here. I went to Focal Price, and you can get this for seven bucks. It attaches to Android phones. I don't think it's available. I didn't see anything mentioning unless it's 
since then. I think this come out. This post was December fifteenth, two thousand fourteen. Only used for Android phones, but what it basically is is it's cardboard and some lenses. So it does kind of the same thing as the old stereo opticons. I don't know if you remember where you had the postcards with two pictures and you'd have the sliding lens to get it in focus that would give you the close up, and they were also prismatic lenses so you could get the right distance between your eyes. But this seems to be much uh, the same thing and. Supposedly there's applications and things you can do with this too. I don't have a, a phone the right size or smart enough. I've got a smartphone, but it's barely what you'd even call a smartphone. But um, if anybody has any experience with this, I'm kind of curious. I love these devices that give you extra things like this, the, the stereo part, the uh, virtual reality. And, uh, yeah, if anybody, a few people in the reviews, I watched the comments down below, and a few people said that it did kind of give them headaches or make them feel nauseous, which... I think you get that with anything that translates stuff into 3D. I think some people just can't handle it. But if you've had any experience with the uh, Google Cardboard VR, um, please leave a comment below or let me know. Or even if you feel like it, if you have one, uh, please make a video about it and send me the video. I'd love to put it on the, the TDD report. Um, yeah, anybody, if you have any uh, personal reviews, personal experience with uh, cool gadgets or stuff like that, make me about, uh, I like it to be somewhere around two minutes, maybe three minutes max, but make it and send it. I would really love to put it on the TDD report. And last up, I'm going to try to keep this show rather short today because I know it's still we're still in the holiday weekends. This is from my friend R2U Jeff. This is, do, 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 get the headline here lined up, working toward a warp drive in his garage lab, Omaha aims to bend fabric of space. Um, this is kind of a long, interesting read. It's one of those other garage science things, and using laser beams and stuff like this, this guy has set up uh, quite a bit of equipment in his garage. His name is, let me get it here, David Perez, I'm thinking P-A-R-E-S with an with a accent. Um, so I'll just read the first part of this. Some guys spend their spare time restoring automobiles, devoting garage space to motionless Corvettes and Camaros. Perez is making his own warp drive. To hear him and his small team of supporters tell us something weird is happening, but not here in the garage. The compression of the fabric of space, Perez says matter-of-factly. Perez's garage is exactly as it sounds. There's not some converted hangar or temperature-controlled shed. Perez's laboratory, the headquarters for his space warp dynamics, so he has his own company, Endeavor, is attached to the mid-sized Axarvent area home where he lives with his wife and their cat. It is split in halves, each side large enough to accommodate a not very large car. It is hot in the summer and cold in the winter. It is a garage. So it goes on to actually tell about his theory. Um, I'm not sure about it myself. He, he kind of bases his theory on this um, idea that when certain airplanes have entered places like the Bermuda Triangle and then all of a sudden they claim that they've jumped ahead in time or jumped ahead in location, that he believes they hit some kind of a warp bubble or something like that. I haven't really seen good evidence myself to convince me. So if he's using that as his basis for this uh, design, although he claims that the design itself, based on lasers and, and creating warp bubbles, um, shows promise on very tiny, small scales. So it could be even though his theory may have some problems, which I'm not saying I know for sure it does, but it still could be that his experimental evidence um, is yielding some good results. So if you get a chance, check this out. This is from Omaha.com. As usual, all the links to all the articles and the videos and everything I'm talking about will be down in the description below. And I'll just leave it here for this week. And I've got lots more material, but please, that doesn't mean I want you to stop sending new material in too. I'd rather be a week ahead of time. But yeah, I've got enough stuff almost for next week's show now. So thank you very much for your help. I really appreciate it. And take care, everybody. I'll catch you next week.